Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's podcast, I am so excited because I know, dear listener, this is going to be one of your favorite podcasts because this person's just a little bit ahead of you in their land investing journey. So we are pulling out Derek White from thelandbros.com. And Derek, I'm so excited for you to share your land investing journey with everyone. How are you, brother? Good. I'm excited to be here. Anxious. Been a long time listener. So it feels like, uh, yeah, a little groupie got, got on the show, but I'm excited to be here. Hopefully anything I've got to say helps somebody. It's good to see you. So let's just start from the beginning. How did you find the land geek and land investing and, uh, and start from there? Yeah, so I've been I've been lucky to have good people in my life that looked out for me because this is a how I ended up here is not where I would have guessed I would have been five years ago, three years ago, even at this point. Um, I I got my degree in animal science at Southern Utah University. Kind of went into like a equine studies, a lot about horses and cows and. Uh, from there, went and managed a, a big cattle ranch in Utah for a while. And then my wife and I opened up like an equine therapy facility where we were going to try and like uh, do therapy with like veterans, uh, kids that have like autism, people with PTSD, people that don't like to talk a lot like in therapy. Horses are really good to break people out of like this comfort zone. And so we opened up, my wife's a mental health therapist and I had the ranching background. So we opened it up and uh, had it like the fall of 2019 is when we kind of went into everything. Then we were deemed like non-essential through COVID and kind of had to sell everything, kind of hit the reset button, which was really hard, like in life. So we slammed the reset button and right at that time, kind of looking of what was next. Uh, my brother, who Mark, you know, Jared, uh, who we kind of, he had heard you on a podcast somewhere. He's a big podcast listener. So he had heard you and, uh, the ball just started rolling. He sent me, uh, he just talked to me one night, kind of like, Hey, would this be something you'd even want to look into? And I remember it was like 10 at night. I had nothing going on. I had, I wasn't working. My wife was working. Like it was just this weird phase of life. So I just listened to dirt rich that whole night. And I'm like, this is it, man. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. So then I think like that week we bought like the toolkit is like, you know, we kind of, we kind of followed the steps all the way through from toolkit to, flight school, the coaching to, to now. So, so that's kind of how we got the start. And it was my brother and I started together. Uh, I bought him out just about a year ago. And so I've been doing it solo for the last year. He's still a big part of the community. It, it was the best of both worlds for both of us. So, so now here we are. Yeah. Jared, Jared's great. And I'm in the, uh, the passive income mastermind group with him. And he's just one of those guys that just wants to help. He's just a yeah. giver. And, uh, and you can see the love uh, he has for you and, and you have for him. It's, it's pretty special. So, yeah. all right. So you go through the toolkit, you go into flight school, you go into coaching. Let's just start with flight school. Yeah. What, what was that experience like for you? Uh, needed, very needed. I, the more I've, I'm huge into self-discovery and the more I learn about myself, the more things I see that I need. Like I really needed some direction and like good guidance. Like, with the toolkit, I just got way excited. I really didn't do anything, you know? And so yeah. just kind of found that neat, like I needed a little bit of like guidance through this. Right. And so for me, it was a huge, uh, it was eye opening for me because I was ready to jump. I wanted to go all in, right? Like I wanted to start flight school with as many properties as I could. And it was an instant, like I was taken back a little bit at how it started. Right. Like it's way more methodical and thought out that whole flight school experience um, to me, which was key. Like it, it kind of like, okay, like let's make sure we kind of get everything set up so that we can move forward the best way we could. So flight school is huge for that. Uh, really helped me make some of my first really good mistakes that I made. You know what I mean? Like I think the first uh, group of offer letters that we sent out, I added an extra zero at the end. So like, everybody was responding and, and accepting our offer. So like, it was a good place to get some of those mistakes out with like, no fear of like, okay, we'll be all right getting through this. Right, right. Okay. And then you guys, or, or actually you decide, hey, 
I want to go into one-on-one coaching. Yeah. And I want to, I want to work with Tate. What's, what's that experience been like? Man, I, I, I would think that like, I think it's probably common, common coming out of flight school to not feel all the way ready for like, to, to maybe to scale it. For me, like I came out, this is a different experience though. This was my full-time thing. Like I, I kind of had to make it start working pretty fast um, just because, you know, we were struggling. We just lost a business. So I had to get things going really fast. I wasn't willing to like take the time to struggle on my own longer than I needed to. And it doesn't mean that I haven't struggled or still struggle all through this, but I think it just took that. Like, I just, like, I think we signed up for coaching before flight school was even done just because like, I knew like I needed some more structure, some more guidance, like just of like one more than just like the technical things in um, like building this business. Cause there's a lot of technical things, but two, almost the side of like just having somebody in your corner as a business owner, right? Like just having somebody that I know I could just get on a quick call with them real fast. Like if something comes up, I've got somebody in my corner and somebody who, when you're in a dip, they're going to be like, look, it's okay. You're fine. Right. Like I want you to go through this dip almost. Right. Like right. that's what I really, really wanted out of it was just feeling like I had some, like a group to start this with. I was, I was a little bit gun shy uh, after these other business, like this other business that just didn't go the way I wanted. So I was, I wanted that community a little bit more and like somebody who intimately knew my business, knew my numbers, knew what properties I had more than just like, Hey, we're all doing this together. It was just a lot more like, I know what you're doing. You're fine. You're on the right path. That's kind of what I was looking for. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Let's talk deals. Yeah. All right. So what has been your favorite deal so far and your least favorite deal? Well, I'll start least favorite first, just because it was my first deal. I think a lot of people jump to their first deal as their favorite one. And mine was like, I had just bought, it was like a single little half acre in Apache, Arizona somewhere, right? Like just barely getting into it. Like just kind of still finishing out flight school. And the guy would only want to pay over Venmo. Like that was it, like just over. And so it was like, all the things that I was building up to, he just wanted to do everything different. And then I made the deal and sure enough, like a month later, he defaulted and was gone. Like however long he could have till default, he defaulted right away. It was just one of those ones, like I just, I wanted something so bad. I maybe like bent back, like bent for the buyer a little too much. And so that, that was uh, my least favorite one, but no big deal. My favorite one, I went to a, a prop like a county auction in person to bu- buy some properties um, out here in Utah. And I bought a bunch of really good properties at this auction. And then as I was sitting there, there was this couple that I had just gotten to talk to the whole time and kind of gotten familiar with. And <clears throat> they c- came up and they were wanting to do more of like cabin flipping. Like they wanted to tax auctions of like r- crappy cabins. <laughs> Right. And so they came up and were like, hey, we've got these two properties next to each other, kind of by Bryce uh, Canyon. It's a national park here in Utah. It's beautiful. Like, we've got these two properties. Um, if you want to buy them, it's three acres total. And without even doing it, t- like, this is not the recommended way. I said this at the live person boot camp. Don't do it this way. <laughs> but like, right. I kind of had just looked at them on the map. I looked at the county website and saw that, like, they were the only two owners on it but I just went for it and I just wrote them a check right there. So I paid for three acres out there. It was like $11,000, which felt like a lot. I didn't really, it was brand new to the area and I drove up to it on the way home. And it's like this, it was a gorgeous property. I ended up selling it for like $45,000 the first time. And then the guy that was buying it moved out of state and he just didn't even default. He just wanted to cancel the payments, which is always awesome. And right. so we worked that out together. He was great. And then I, I actually just sold it again for $60,000 after it's already paid itself off. So it was one of these weird ones, like a weird buyer, kind of an offshoot, but it's been like such a profitable deal that it's, it's gotta be my favorite for me. So yeah, that, that's like an infinite return. If you'd already gotten your capital out and then you sold yeah. it again for 60. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's, that one was, that's a fun one. That one's been a good one. That's awesome. Okay. And then, uh, as far as like building up your passive income, so 
going from zero to where are you at now and how long did it take? So this has been an interesting, even this has been an interesting question because my strategy, it bounces up and down a lot. Just my strategy of the right now of growing my business, I sell notes and things often, but I'm bouncing all over around like 8,500 to a little over 9,000 all the time. And that's kind of where I, I'm always going in and out, but I, I'll, you know, I'll sell notes off here and there. But uh, yeah, right around there right now with, with goals to get bigger and bigger. So, And, and how long do you think it took? To so to at year one, we were only at like just under $3,000. So the first year, like that was still great. We were excited about it. Um, that was right kind of the same time of like buying my brother out. But like we had like that, we had a great first year of that. And then it's only been just a year since then. And we've kind of are up to about that 9,000. So really hockey stick that second year. And I still feel like it's just starting a hockey stick, hopefully. But uh, yeah, that's a, uh, it's taken about two years to get there, but really this last year getting a little bit more efficient has been, uh, it's grown a lot quicker. Yeah, no, a- absolutely. Absolutely. And then tell, tell us about your team. Yeah. And, and how that all works. So <laughs> That's a, that's been my hardest part for me is, is building a team together. I think a lot of it, I have a personality of just shooting from the hip a lot and making things happen right up just in the moment. And uh, it's getting exhausting doing it that way. So now the team is being built a lot more. I've kind of been running lean with just like some VAs for posting, um, ad writing, things like that. Just like the things I never want to do again, for sure. Like they've all been gone. I had a really good intake manager for a while. She had to go, she kind of had to let me go, unfortunately. And so just got that up and going again. And then I actually just hired an executive assistant to really help me build some teams now. So I've I've been running pretty lean these first couple of years as far as like the VA team goes. Okay. So as far as like you working in the business and on the business, like what do you like the most to do? And what do you, what do you, feel like, oh, this part of the business is just not my favorite. Yeah, I love buying property still. I actually really enjoy uh, talking to some of the people that are selling it. I'm a people person. I love to talk to people on both ends. So the things in the middle are what, what I'm hiring out. I love talking to people on both ends. The intake I'm actually hiring out too because you can like to talk to people, but not that much. <laughs> but then, right, right. so for me, like I, I love the sales side of the business. Uh, I love figuring out a way to give your, your own business a little bit of a voice. Um, I've helped some other land investors and there's, it's been tough sometimes because like there is a voice with your business often, right? And like, I love that part of it, like building a little bit of a voice in my uh, ads and then the way I sell um, it's a lot more. I try and make things really personal to the people. So that's my favorite part, actually, is is the sales and the working with people, getting people excited. I can't change the property. So if they're excited about it, I'm going to make them get way more excited about it, you know. And and uh, so that, that's the part I love the most. Everything else, like the technical things are awesome, but I'm hiring all those out. Absolutely. So so what are you personally like doing? Like how, how much I'm mean, having hours? Would you say you spend a day or a week in the business? Yeah. So I probably spend like four hours a day on the business, like on my business. I still am like a full time dad. And so that takes a lot of my time. So like I'm blocking out more and more, but I think it's like this weird balance you have, even when you're starting, right. Of like, how much do I put my time into it versus how much time do I put to getting out of my time of the business. And so like, there's always been that balance. Some weeks I'll work 50 hours, 60, like I'll spend a whole, it just, sometimes it depends for me. Um, but overall, I probably only work four to five hours a day. So maybe 20 hours a week in the business and have built it up to where it is. Wow. Okay. So I can imagine after, you know, 2019, you know, you go into COVID, Yeah. you guys, you know, had like this dream of the equine therapy. And now you say to your wife, Hey, how about if I start my own land business? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what was her thought on this? Oh, my wife's the best, man. I, uh, she, I think we're both huge advocates of like making sure you find things that you like to do. Like I've done a lot of things. I kind of glazed over what I'd done from ranching to that, but like in this focus of figuring out how to make money, I sold cars, I sold insurance, I sold life insurance. I was a server at a restaurant. I bagged flat. 
like I've done a lot of things and like I have this uh, personality. I can't settle on things that I don't like. I just, yeah. I've never been able to do an office job. Ranching was really good for me that way, but there's no money in it for me. And so like I was, I've been bouncing around and just trying not to settle. And like, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Cause this is like a podcast about like land investing. Right. Right. But I think it's a huge vehicle of finding that freedom that you talk about all the time to become the best version of yourself. And so that's almost more of what my wife pushed me on than like <laughs> thinking I was coming in with this cash cow right away. Right. Like it was more of this, like, if this is a vehicle that helps you like perform at your highest like level of, of a person, then yeah, you need to go all in for it. And, but she's always been that way for me. So, so that was really great. I was super nervous. I still am nervous about it every day. It's just every morning you feel like you're just betting on yourself for the day. And that comes with all the good and sometimes all the scary things that come up with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's so funny that you say that because entrepreneurship, I think gives people that opportunity to really be the best version of, of themselves and, and create this utopia. Yeah. And, and there's just so many things you can do as far as how you treat people, how you treat your virtual assistants, how, you know, how you structure your day. Um, it, 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 and you have to keep growing to do it. It's, it's really just, I, I think everyone should be an entrepreneur at some level, <laughs> yeah. even if it's just small and you don't, you know, it's some level like, oh yeah, that's risky. I think it's risky not to be. Yeah. It's kind of that like, choose your hard quote, right? Like it would be yeah. really hard for me to be in an office somewhere. It's also really hard for me, like developing and building a land business. Right. But, but like, I'd way rather be doing this uh, and just keep betting on myself over and over. And that's like one of the biggest, like, that's why I try and stay around like the land geek community as much as I can. It's because yes, you're betting on yourself, but also like, you've got a good group, a good foundation of people who have kind of like been there. Like as if it comes to bad deals, things like that, like people have had all those feelings come up. Right. But like, this is a great area to like be yourself and get as much as you can from a great network of people who I feel like uh, definitely is, it's been a huge benefit to me. Yeah, no, absolutely. So as far as like you personally now, yeah. how has the land investing business changed your life? Uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, these last couple of years have been a huge life shift for me. Uh, Mark, I know I've told you this and I'm, I'm an open book about it as far as like um, at that time, like I lost my ranch. I like my mental health. I've been battling mental health for a long time. I was I got way too close to not wanting to be here anymore. Right. A little suicidal, things like that, that like it's given me an opportunity to lean into me and like figure out what I need to do to find that just like self-discovery, that passion for life again. You know what I mean? And there's like, so it's kind of an interesting thing because it hasn't like my business story is a lot about like my personal story because it's kind of gone hand in hand. Like it's been amazing to watch my business grow as like, I'm like feeling more and more like confident in myself and like just this better headspace all the time. And so in life, like it's awesome because it's I like I find so much beauty in like the the depth of human existence. Like that we can we can feel so much stress over a half acre parcel in the middle of a desert somewhere. Like you get to feel all the emotions, right? And like being an entrepreneur, right. it will make you feel everything. Like like today I just had a bunch of properties default and there's always like I'm still early enough that there's still that tinge of like crap, like let's go, you know? So like you just get to feel all of it. So like for me personally, it's been like my life has changed a ton because it's, it's allowed me to get some like success and validation in, in a business, but also like it's been more like freeing up like my mind. <laughs> and like you talk a lot about solving people's money and time problems and like it's a little like it's been both for me. You know, I think I think both of those things have been able to contribute to to just having like it's all perspective, but like seeing life in a, in a little bit sweeter way, like a, a little bit more uh, positive outlook on life. So so <laughs> I know that's kind of an interesting answer, but for me, it's it's totally changed my life these last few years to have this, to always be able to be working on it and to like never have anything that's too crazy of an emergency. Like there's nothing right. here that like, like if, if you need to take a minute, 
you can take a minute. You know what I mean? You'll be okay. Like you just come right back in where you left off. So it's been huge for me that way. Okay. So, I mean, given that, you know, this journey has been so dramatic for you, yeah. if you could rewind the tape and go back to the very beginning of when you were starting your land investing journey and give yourself advice, what would you give younger Derek? Mm. Oh, that's a great question. I think when I started to feel the hockey stick, even this past year, like, I think what happened was you get over this fear element. And I think like, I would love to go back to like, even just starting this and just like, you will be okay. Like regard, regardless, right? Like you're buying property to like in a business sense, in a logical financial sense, you're going to be okay. Like this is sure. It's a little bit of a risk. You're going to be okay. like, I think just to anything to say to like, get over that fear factor of starting uh, would have really helped me that first year. Cause I was just so nervous about any decision. I was so nervous about losing 25 bucks on a VA that doesn't pan out. Right. Like so fearful of all these little things that like, they don't really if like, I think just getting over that fear went a long way for me. So that that's kind of what I would go back and try and try and say. Yeah. It, it's so funny you say that because when you, you know, if you're, if you're lucky enough to meet Derek, at a live boot camp, and I would hang out with him. You know, he's a big guy. He's happy go lucky. You guys got like this, you know, like devil, what's a devil free, devil carefree attitude, or I forget the cliche, but like, yeah, uh, you know, you wouldn't think that this guy has any fear at all. So it's, it's, I think it's really uh, refreshing to hear that, you, you know, even though you have this attitude of everything's going to work out, like internally, we, you know, you have yeah. the same fears as the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a, and it's a daily battle too. Like I, there's always a new fear. Like that's always a new thing that's going to be jumping at you. Right. Like, like, uh, you know, there's all, once you get, you don't know what you don't know. So when you get there, everything seems a little easier, but when you're getting into it, it gets a little nerve wracking sometimes. So it's a, it's a huge element. And I think for, you can say that for any business, I don't think that's exclusive to land, but I think it's one of the, like, it's a place that was way more reassuring being in this business of like, it was, it's been able to take a lot of that fear of, of being a business owner away and a, and a successful business owner. Cause there's a lot more things that come up, the more you bring in. Right. And, and, uh, so it's helped a ton. No, that's, that's amazing. Okay. So, you know, imagine someone's listening to this, they're hearing your story and they're, a, they're a little behind you. It's they're two years before you. And they're thinking to themselves, boy, I'd love to solve my money, my time problems. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about the economy. I'm worried about inflation. There's so much uncertainty. What advice would you give that person? Um, I think the advice would be that like to realize you're in control of a lot of things here. Like there's so many of those things you don't get a control. Like I, I have no control over the economy and what it does to land. I personally haven't felt anything with the reese like, ups and downs recently, whatever, like I haven't, but like, as far as like what you're going to do with anything that comes your way, like you're in control of it. Like when you build this business, there's no boss looking over your shoulder, telling you what you're doing wrong, shaming you and all these things. Like you're in control of all of it, which I think can kind of tie back into all of those insecurities is like, I don't, however someone would need to hear to get over fear is what I would try and get across, like learning what it is about people. There's a lot of people that start these businesses that I've got to, the more I get to meet a lot of people in the land geek community, a lot more analytical minds than I am, right? A lot more check off boxes, which is, I wish I'm jealous that I don't have a little more of that. And so I think you can look at so many examples. Like I kind of look at, at Tate, at Scott, at Eric, at all the coaches, like I say the same thing, how you started this question is they're just a little bit further along than I am. They've gone through all the hiccups that I'm going to go through. Like they're just years ahead of me. Like that's fine. Like I'm on my own path to get there. They don't seem scared of 
the future. And in fact, it's all opposite. It's, it's putting more and more back in the land. So I think relying on that. And if anybody meets me, I promise if I can figure it out a little bit, you can figure it out a ton. Like this, it's a stretch for me and I've even figured it out. So I promise whoever's listening is going to be able to go way further. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so funny. All right, Derek. Well, we're at that point in the podcast now and your mentorship has been phenomenal. Oh, but I... I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before you give your tip of the week, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He's done it thousands of times. And oh, by the way, that tuition investment ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make it back in terms or cash sales. Just show us your work. Derek, I would, you would agree, right? The best investment you can make is in yourself. Yeah. Just keep betting on yourself. <laughs> and so with just, all those things too, I've, I, I kind of, I've bought as much as I could at the, like I've been buying as much as I could at the land geek community. I've never thought about it since then again, but like not paying off. I mean, it's never, I've never been able to think like, oh, I wish I could take Mark up and get my money back. It's always like it's paid itself off easily. Yeah. So if you want to become like Derek White, your first step in this journey is just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Derek White, what is your tip of the week? Let's see. I've got a book <laughs> and I, uh, oh, sorry. It's on my bookshelf real quick. Um, I won't swear on your podcast, but it's the subtle art of not giving a freak. I'll do the Utah swear word. Oh, that, that Mark Manson, the subtle art of not giving a freak. A freak. Yeah. yeah, this this will keep our. Uh, <laughs> we don't have to do the the, the explicit thing on. Yeah, on, yeah, I don't want to make iTunes. it a mature program. So, so what book, is it about that book? One, I love kind of going against the grain uh, of maybe certain ways of thinking of tradition of like this regular nine to five thing. I think anybody that's an entrepreneur has some of that in them of like going against maybe some of the norm. And this is a huge, like, it's a different way of, it's just a new perspective on maybe how to think, right? About how to not care as much. Will you will replace that word for care? Like how to not like care as much about as much as you care about and really focus on and kind of laser focus on what's important to you. And you'll watch your life just kind of flourish around those things that are really important to you. And it takes a lot of stress away from life. Like when you, when you kind of just, uh, I, I don't know. It was a great perspective for me. I like the curse words a little bit just because it, it kind of kicks against the, the norm and uh, it gives you a different perspective of how to think. So I've loved it. It's, I'm a huge proponent of like self-discovery and that's kind of figuring out what's important to you and uh, really just caring about that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Mark Manson. Yeah. And, you know, he's such a young guy. He's kind of like a, like a Ryan Holiday. Like these are like young guys. And, and they're spouting out a lot of wisdom. I'm, I'm always so impressed that, that they're able to sort of distill, say, like, I, like if you read Mark Manson, he's, he's distilling a lot of Buddhism right. and existentialism in this very easy to digest way. And, and Ryan yeah. Holiday does the same thing with stoicism. Yeah, I've got a couple and, of his, his books over there, The Daily Stoic. Yeah, they're young guys that are figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fantastic. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Derek. Maybe uh, invest in some land with him. Go to thelandbros.com. Thelandbros.com. Derek White, are we good? Hey, thank you. I, I, you know, I appreciate you and, and this whole community. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I appreciate you as well. And... Just a reminder to the listeners, the only way I'm going to be able to get Derek White to come back and talk even more about his journey, maybe even a year from now when he's at 16 or $20,000 a month of passive income, is if you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, 
send us a screenshot of that review, support at philanthropic.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, and maybe even it's coming out soon. Dirt Rich 2. The Heck plot yeah. thickens. How to, how to scale your, your land business without skipping a beat. Derek, you're going to love this book. I'm ready. Are there no, are there any teasers of when it's coming out? Uh, I, not, on, not on here. Not, I'm still on I'm like the final <laughs> stages. It's really hard to lock. Yeah. It's really hard. To well, lock. I think you've got a whole group of people excited. So we'll, we'll read it when it comes out. Yeah, I mean, I, I know at least my mom will read it. Yeah, well, she might. She might not read it, but she'll she'll have another she'll buy it. coffee, cool. coffee shit, you know, table. So, um, well, Derek, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you, dear listener, and let's do this together. Let's do it. One, two, three. Let's let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> not bad. Oh, I got bad. it. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. We didn't talk about Newport Beach. What's that? And the show, a show I love, and since you're you're you were in a rancher, Yellowstone. Did you ever watch Yellowstone? Yeah, I was on it. My wife and I were in it. Come on, <laughs> you were not. I promise. Which we, you would have never recognized us. We were extras, but they the ranch that they were working on was not far from the ranch that I was running. So we we took our like some tra- our horse trailer and truck, and then my w- wife and I were both in the background, like. We had to drive. I had to back up my horse trailer like 20 times for one shot around their like hundred thousand dollar boom camera and all this. It was it was fun. It was really cool. No way. How, now, how realistic show. is that show? Um, <laughs> I mean, there's no. I never murdered anybody, and we, <laughs> we had a big, big time ranch that we were on. But uh, the I love it. The cowboy in scenes. There's they do such a good job. Like it's so good. And it, so, it always so that cowboy back. culture is real. Oh, there's that's it's a huge accurate. culture. Well, see, that's what like I almost can't disrespect it anymore now that I've quit and I don't have a horse or I I never get dirty anymore. I only wear like golf shirts. Like it's because I had to be all the way in when I was in. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's an interesting. It's I love the show though. I mean, did you ever get hurt? Yeah, my hips are terrible. I I've uh, got a lot of hip problems from training horses. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, but I'm a big guy. So like when I'd be starting a horse and they'd like be bucking, like, I, yeah, I just, I just tore my hips up like crazy. So, and so did you live on car. the ranch? Like those guys yeah, so, live on so the, the ranch. house that my wife and I lived in. So they gave us a house when we were there and uh, like, we didn't have a neighbor for like seven miles in each direction. They owned like, I think it was like, I can't remember how many, this is hundreds of thousands of acres that they owned. And so like wow. just all this private acres, like right out in front of our house is like the horse corral. So like every morning I'd run up, like I would take the horses from the pen up the corral. And my wife would sit there. We had a brand new baby and just watch. We had probably 50 horses that would just run 10 feet from our front door every morning. Like it was, it was magical. I loved it. I loved it. It was hard for me to i would have like that place i would have tried to stay forever the guy that owned it sold the ranch and then they got rid of the calf cow program through it and so that's kind of where i was working and so they got rid of the position basically or else i would have probably been there for a long time just because it's beautiful yeah beautiful beautiful country all right man well this is great thanks for sharing i love you man love you brother i'll see you soon bye all right bye Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.